We're into the upper limb on this um, segment of the tape, and we'll be looking initially at the wrist joint, basically intercarpal subluxations. Uh, these are generally described as either palmar or dorsal subluxations. And the bone that's named, if it was a dorsal capitate, is presumed to have subluxed on its proximal partner. Unless it's described differently, that's exactly what it means. So if we have a dorsal capitate, essentially what it means is that the capitate is subluxed into a flexed position. Um, this will obviously limit extension. And as we try to extend the wrist as a unit, we'll come up with this hard, abrupt pathomechanical end fill. In addition, when we try to glide the capitate palmally, then again, we'll have a restricted movement plus this abnormal end fill. The manipulation for these um, carpal subluxations is a direct palmar or dorsal thrust um, into the direction of the abnormal end fill to reduce the subluxation and to restore normal motion. So we'll be looking at a few examples of this, um, and I'll use the dorsal capitate as the first example. And remembering that if we're talking about dorsal capitate, we're talking about it being subluxed on the lunate. And this, of course, you'll find from your passive examination. So if we turn to the wrist, and we take Donna's wrist, we shall come onto the dorsum of the capitate. Now this is sitting dorsally, as I say, the thrust now wants to be palmally. I need, though, to stabilise the lunate, and I do this by using my index fingers and blocking the lunate palmally. I'll then put one thumb over the capitate and the other thumb on top of that thumb, which will provide the thrust. The wrist must be kept in its least pack position. If we start to close, move this towards its close pack position, then the joint will jam and the manipulation will fail. So we keep the wrist at all times in its least pack position. We want to provide a little bit of joint volume, so we'll have the patient just lean backwards away from us slightly to provide that traction as we lean slightly from them. Now don't apply too much traction, otherwise the capsules will tighten up and it will restrict this movement. Stabilising the lunate, I will then thrust the capitate directly palmally. And you'll note that as I did this, it was a straight palmar thrust and there was no extension of the wrist, just straight down. If this capitate had been palmar rather than dorsal, we have a new problem on our hands. Um, it isn't particularly practical to fix the lunate and try and flip the capitate up. It's a technique that's often taught, but it's a technique that doesn't usually work. Rather than do this, we'll fix the capitate palmally, this way, and come onto the dorsum of the lunate with your thumbs. So in effect, we are going to thrust the lunate palmarward which will have the relative effect of bringing the capitate dorsally, which is the effect that we want. Otherwise, the technique is exactly the same. We'll have the patient just sit away from us and thrust the lunate down against the fixed capitate. When you're doing this technique as practice, you have to be careful. If you do happen to sublux this lunate palmally because you over-manipulate this, uh, you can create a traumatic carpal tunnel syndrome. Um, so when you are practicing this, I wouldn't put too much force through. Of course, when you actually have a patient in this position, um, then it's a reasonable thing to do. But be careful with the amount of force you apply pushing the lunate palmally. If we look at lunate subluxations, these sublux on the radius and the ulnar meniscus. Essentially, though, it's exactly the same principles. If I have a dorsal lunate, I'll stabilise the ulna and the radius, thumbs onto the lunate here, apply your traction, and thrust the lunate palmarward. And again, remembering when you're practising this technique, you don't really want to thrust it into the carpal tunnel, so keep your force down as you're practising. If this was a palmar lunate and I want to bring it dorsally, then what I'll do is I'll fix the palmar surface of the lunate again, come onto the radius and the ulna, and I will thrust these palmarly again, relatively bringing the lunate dorsally. So we apply the same traction again, and thrust. Okay? Now the thrust is not done with your wrist. Okay? It's done with your arms. It's this downward movement there, as you fix the stabilised bone. The same principles apply throughout all the carpals, and the common ones you'll be doing are for the scaphoid on the radius, and that can be dorsal or palmar, and essentially again we fix the radius. If we're going to thrust the scaphoid palmarly, come onto the dorsum of the scaphoid, play attraction, 
and manipulate it down. If we want to bring it dorsally, we'll fix the undersurface of the scaphoid, come onto the radius and thrust the radius down. So all of these manipulations are the same.